Welcome to episode two of Vlogmas. I am in a rush today because I need to leave to go to my sister's in 20 minutes and I've got some stuff to do. Mr P is doing the school run which is nice because it gives me a break from the school run and he gets to kind of enjoy that part of it. It is quite nice when they behave but the, uh, the walk back through the village afterwards is always very nice. I'm just packing up all the bits that I'm taking from my mum's advent bag and I thought I would show you my little contributions. My sister has crocheted the bag and it's amazing and she's picked up a few other little bits as well. I am taking them all with me in an older advent bag, probably my most used actually. This is from 2020. You can see in there, it says, oh, it says made by mama 2020. Um, and it's like a shopping bag. It's like soft lined with pockets and like plastic on the outside. I use this as my Christmas project bag quite a lot actually because of all the pockets. <laughs> and I use it when I'm like taking my projects and stuff away with me. So it all started with this and I'm not inclined to get it out. Should I get it out? This is an advent calendar poster colouring in thing and I saw it on Instagram I thought it's so beautiful my mum would love that so I ordered it for her and then I thought hang on a minute let's turn this into an advent bag next up we have some diamond art I don't know if my mum has done diamond art but I know my sister loves it and I know that my mum loves poinsettias poinsettias I never know I'm sure my mum will correct me um, but that's just like a little bit of Christmas crafting fun then I've basically just been picking up bits over the past month whenever I've seen them. I got some festive microfiber cloths, which I know are the most random thing in the world. And I was a little bit annoyed because the front one is printed and the rest are not, but they are festive colors. And my mum's kitchen is red. So these will look really good. These were from Primark. I also got her a festive candle from Primark. This is frankincense and myrrh. And it smells ever so nice. So nice twinkly candle for her. Of course, a festive mug. I had to work really hard not to keep this one. It's really subtle. It just says, get cosy on it. And it's kind of, again, her kitchen is red. So I thought this would go really nicely in her kitchen. And it's festive because it's got a holly wreath. But all winter long, not just the month of December. Um, we've got an ornament which I'm terrified of breaking so I'll probably wrap it up in something before I put it in but this just says 2022 on it and my mum has quite a pink and girly and um, very pretty looking tree so I thought that would be nice in here I can't remember the name of the company it was from Etsy I'll put it in here but I went onto her website to get a calendar that she makes that they'd sold out she does beautifully illustrated calendars cards paperware and beads this is a little bead selection you're not gonna be able to see them but they're all like red and festive for jewelry making which my mother loves so I couldn't not and then of course we have her mittens that I showed you yesterday which were my kind of handmade contribution and then I got her completely inspired by Sandy 
from By the Lakeside, who I was watching earlier and is like my, one of my favourite vlogmases, like really high up there. I've been watching the old years for the past few weeks. And in one of the years, I think it's like 2020 maybe, she has one of these tea advent calendars. It's from English Tea Shop. And I thought that is perfect because my mum loves tea and it's the it's a good size. It's tiny. It's not like a great big tea advent calendar. There, there are 12 different teas, 13 different teas, 25 bags all together. And you just open the bottom and like pull one out every day. It's like a little surprise. Um, so I ordered these off Amazon and I ordered a box for my sister as well because she also loves herbal tea. Um, and now that my mum is equally as obsessed with by the lakeside as I am she's gonna know where that's from and appreciate it and then we have a bar of chocolate this is kind of like more for her husband so he's got like a little sweet treat in there or she can share it or she can not and finally I got this amazing guy which is a hot chocolate hot chocolate light up lantern Oh, I'd have to take the plastic thing off to make it light up. But yeah, you can see the lantern's kind of got little holes in it. So when you finish the hot chocolate, it's an ornament. And these are from M&S. This is a small one. They do a bigger one with shortbread in. I don't think they've sold out yet. But I thought that was just lovely, kind of two in one. Something to drink and something to decorate. And that is everything that I'm sending off for my mum's advent book. Advent book, advent calendar. I said book, advent calendar, advent bag. Um, I said that because I've got two books in my hands. They're both the same, but I wanted to show you them quickly. If you have been following my channel, you will know that my mum, my sister, my grandma, and I all got together to make um, Christmas decorations for a tree that goes outside my house every year because my village does a Christmas tree trail where you um, buy a map, the money goes to local charities um, and it basically brings tourism to the village for the local businesses. We've got quite a lot of really beautiful little businesses in our village. So we did that this year and the theme was all I want for Christmas is and I said yarn so we've like covered it and honestly my contribution to this tree even though I spent hours making decorations I managed to get out like six knitted decorations this they take so long because they're so fiddly whereas my mum and my sister were able to just crank out those crochet decorations my grandma made a paper chain I show a few of them I go more into it in my latest podcast and I am hoping to show you the tree but the weather as you will have seen has been quite well, not miserable because I really like a foggy day. I really love a misty day in winter. It makes me feel extra cosy, but it's not the best for filming outside. So I'm waiting for a, a brighter day and then I'll show you the Christmas tree. But to say thank you to my mom and my sister, so many people sent me this book online. I have got them both a copy of All I Want for Christmas is Yarn. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. And it's a book by Lindsay Nunes. And it's 30 crochet projects for festive gifts and decorations. I'm sure they're sick of making crochet decorations for now, but I thought they could have a little look through and get some inspiration for next year. There really are some beautiful things in this. I'm trying not to show you the instructions, but this is a garland that says, follow la la la. And I'm like, this makes me want to crochet. I'm sure I can manage that. Like I can crochet, I'm just not like, prolific like my mum and my sister who were just like next level what else can we show oh my gosh there's like um a fluffy teddy bear yarn boucle yarn mat for under the christmas tree with pom-poms that does not look crocheted does it that's amazing what does it need Serdar alpine which looks like a teddy bear yarn to me but i'm sure you could do that in boucle it's like a little tree skirt. So, oh my gosh. I, I might I might have to do that though. I think to do that kind of thing in crochet, you have to be very good because you kind of have to intuitively find the stitches because you can't see them. Or maybe uh, my mother or my sister will make one for me. It looks like it might be a bit of a boring project there. But yeah, there's hats. Look at this hat. Like, I find like crochet for me is not something that I would want to wear in a garment because I find it too thick, but that looks amazing. That looks almost Tunisian. Is it Tunisian? No, I don't think it is. Gorgeous. Anyway, yes, I'm very excited to give these to them to say thank you. And 
yeah, there we go. What's the time? 10 to. Right, okay, I've got to get going now. So I'm off to my sister's now. I don't know how much I will film, so I... Um, so this might be a slightly shorter one today, but yesterday's was quite long, 35 minutes in the end. I uploaded it early. I know yesterday I was like, I'm not gonna be uploading until the next day, but I realized that I was not gonna have any time to edit today until tonight. So I did some editing in the day yesterday, as you saw, and then my husband really wanted to play his uh, video game. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna edit then. Um, so I feel good to get that done. Thank you to everyone who's watched it so far and left a lovely comment. I love the comments so much and it makes me feel very happy to know that you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It's put me in such a good mood. I practically jumped out of bed this morning to get ready to film again, even though between the hours of half past two and half past four last night, both children were up and down, musical beds. Jess said he didn't feel very well, but he seems all right this morning, so we'll see so without further ado happy friday almost the weekend let's i'm gonna say it if you know you know let's crack on with the day almost forgot to tell you about my t-shirt because you'll probably ask i've been waiting to wear this for ages this is my mince pie appreciation society t-shirt and i got it from a website called alphabetbags.co.uk.com not too sure and i'm obsessed with it i don't i don't feel like i want to buy or wear like christmas jumpers anymore um because i'm now a knitting snob <laughs> and i'm working on a festive jumper and i also get quite hot very easily so i like to have a festive t-shirt so that i can still be festive and stay cool <laughs> i love it it's amazing i should have got one for penny Walking around, feeling free, thinking about what's happened to me from July up till now. Don't know where, don't know how. Lately, I've come to realize that I can't see it in your eyes. So it's true. I'm so glad you feel it too. Nothing to Welcome back. I hope you've had a lovely day. I've had a really, really nice day, as you would have seen from my little clips, but I've just had the most chilled out day. I got to my sister's this morning and she made me some breakfast because I hadn't had time to Is have... Is that my iPad? Yeah. I... Yeah. I didn't have time to have breakfast this morning and we put my mum's advent back together and she absolutely loved it. She was so surprised and she was so, so happy with it all and then we just spent the rest of the afternoon, morning, afternoon, just knitting and crafting. I got quite a lot done. And I'll show you what I got done in a little minute. I came home to a little surprise. I drove home and was just gonna nip in and go to the loo and then go pick the kids up. And P was already home. You all right, darling? She got sent home from nursery with a temperature. She seemed absolutely fine this morning. I thought if either of the kids was going to come home, it would have been Jeff because he woke up quite a lot last night. But my sweet little baby girl isn't very well. It's quite common for Pete to have a temperature. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean she's that poorly. It's just how her body processes viruses and stuff. So hopefully she won't be poorly for too long. Um, hopefully she'll burn it off in one night. But um, my husband's gone to go and get Jeff whilst I sit here with this little one. I think she's gonna fall asleep pretty soon. So whilst I was at my mum's, I was at my mum's, so whilst I was at my sister's, I was working on, I don't wanna say it out loud in case he's still in the house. I don't think he is still in the house. Ben? No, he's gone. Um, I was working on Ben's cardigan and I got quite a lot of it done. I've nearly, finished i think i've nearly finished the back piece or i'm about to start increasing for the armholes and my biggest reservation about this pattern was the all over texture but I've, it's already become quite intuitive to me and there's like a front and a back and then it's kind of staggered so i just need to pay attention at the beginning of the row to make sure i'm doing the right row and then i'm off it's fine it's all in my head so i'm feeling confident that this is going to get done i'll show it to you 
I have filmed this already, but the ankle was making me feel nauseous. So <laughs> let's go again. So this is how much I've got done on my husband's cardigan on the back piece. Quite a lot, probably at, at least at least two thirds of this back section and I'm about six rows away from the next instruction which I think will be increasing for the underarms doesn't feel very long so I need to check the measurements because historically my row gauge tends to be quite off so I might need to add a little bit more length at this point and maybe do some row gauge jiggery pokery so that's what I was working on at my mum's and I'm probably going to have to put have to put this away now because my husband has finished work for the day so he's probably going to be hanging out with us unless he goes out for a bit if he does go out then i'm going to spend if he doesn't go out sorry i'm going to spend some time on my grandma's shawl this is the rolling hills i think it's called if that's wrong i'll put the right thing here but i'm pretty sure this is the rolling hills so far it's just a great big long garter crescent and i'm using john arb and devonia held with a strand of mohair it is the squishiest fluffiest loveliest thing and when i finish this garter section and i'm i'm nearly there i'm nearly finished we've got a nice big feather and fan lace section all along the back my grandma was wearing her shawlography when I saw her at the weekend and she did say how she, did, she doesn't wear it as often as she liked because it makes her quite warm because it's so big. And even though this combination is going to be warm, it, um, it's going to be a lot smaller than the shawlography. So she should be able to kind of wear it a little bit more easily, hopefully. And I am really enjoying the kind of simple squishiness of all the garter, even though the rows are getting long. There's going to be over 300 stitches by the time I've finished this section. And then they continue increasing through the lace section as well. But I think it's going to be worth it. I'm using a slightly smaller needle. But obviously because it's garter, it's going to, it's got the ability to grow loads and loads and loads. And as I said, I don't mind it being small. I think it will be good for her to have a slightly smaller one than the shawlography. And then last night I was working on a pair of gloves whilst I was editing that I showed you. And I thought I'd just give you a daylight close up. If you've seen the last podcast, you'll know about these. I've had a love affair with the Penny Gloves by Petite Knit. I've already made one, two, three pairs. This is my fourth pair. This is at the original gauge. My other pairs, I hacked the pattern to be a DK weight gauge and I can knit a pair in five hours. So I'm making these for gifts this year. I've got this pair, two of the pairs that I would like to make and then one more pair if I've got time. But they will all be at the DK weight gauge. This is at the original gauge on a three millimeter needle. And I would definitely like to make myself a pair at this gauge because I love my Newton ones because they're big and they're loose. But as it's getting colder, they're almost too loose. They're not offering me much warmth anymore. Whereas these ones at the original gauge are like they fit me perfectly these are for my sister by the way these are going to be as a thank you for hosting christmas eve present you know normally you take flowers or a bottle of wine or something she's going to have enough of all that so i'm going to give her a pair of these she works from home as well so when she's typing it'll keep her hands nice and warm while she's working from home so i think when i make my next pair of dk ones i might take a couple of stitches out because they do that mine have grown quite a lot with wear, with wear. So I'll probably take a couple of stitches out which will make them even quicker. So those are my three main projects at the moment that I'm working on. We're just gonna be chilling out for the rest of the day. I would really, really like to take a bath. I love a daytime bath. I feel like in the evening I wanna chill out and knit and spend time with my husband so I don't wanna spend like, you know, an hour in the bath. But I do like sneaking one in in the day sometimes. It makes it feel extra special. And then the kids will have my water afterwards. So, you know, using up the water. So hopefully when my husband comes home, if he doesn't go out. Are you all right, sweetie? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully if my husband doesn't go out, I'll be able to have a bath. I have been watching a couple of vlogmases. I managed to get a few in this morning. I've watched Sandy by the Lakeside. Obviously, I've already mentioned that. She's my fave. I watched um, Sugar Folk Handmade. It's her first vlogmas this year. If you like a family-based vlog and you enjoy mine, I think you'll really enjoy hers as well because it's a lot of um, time with her family and her knitting projects. 
and then if I do get to have a bath I'm going to watch the Knitted by Whitney vlogmas which I haven't watched yet and I want and I've been saving until I can give it my full attention because it's her first year and I'm so excited to see a little bit more into Whitney's life. I love her podcasts. She has a unique format. She gives, she, she talks and presents herself so beautifully she's a pleasure to watch so i'm very much excited to see a little bit more about her life and then i've got crazy sock lady i've got nitty natty i've got so many to come very very excited so yeah i hope you're enjoying your day and i'll catch up with you in a little while bye I'm a little bit chilly can you tell <laughs> I feel like this is my like signing off spot because <laughs> it's the bedroom and it's quiet it's very yellow though in the lighting so mm, I apologize um so we've had quite a chilled out afternoon Penny fell asleep on the sofa with Ben so I had quite a nice long bath then Jeff went in afterwards and P did go in when she woke up but just for a minute and she seems in quite good spirits now. The cow poles really kicked in and she's had a bit of a sleep. So who knows what time she's going to bed tonight. We're going to have chippy tea. That makes me sound so English. <laughs> chippy tea. Um, my American viewers, there are more American than British viewers actually. Do you understand the concept of chippy tea? Do you know what chippy tea is? <laughs> Chippy tea is basically when you get your tea from the fish and chip shop, the British institution. We've got a really, really good chippy just up the road, literally less than a minute's walk. And they cook everything fresh. It's really busy on a Friday night, but it's worth it. So Mr P is going to go and get fish and chips for when the kids go to bed. And I ended up doing a little bit of work. I was contacted by my lovely friend Whitney who I have mentioned today and I watched her um, vlogmas in the bath sorry if that's weird Whitney <laughs> but she messaged me saying could she change her mind about the eclair test knit and join or is it too late so I'm very 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 pleased to have Whitney on board my testing team and it reminded me that I haven't actually sent the pattern to my testers yet still haven't because I had quite a little bit to do on it before I can send it out to them and I just need to change one or two of the charts because they've got a couple of stray like pearl stitches in there but I do that on my iPad and my son has the iPad. He tends to have quite a bit of iPad time on a Friday after school it's kind of like end of the week really tired let him have a decent chunk of like iPad time to kind of chill out after school. So once I get that back, I'll finish that chart and send it off to my testers. I'm really, really excited to get it going now. It's going to be quite a long test. The Eclair will not be out before February, but hopefully in February. So there's still time to knit it kind of whilst it's still a little bit cold. Um, though I know a lot of people knit sweaters all year round. We've obviously got two hemispheres as well. So I'm trying not to be quite so... I worried about seasonality this year and just release what feels right when it feels right um and you know i can always do like seasonal sales and stuff as well if i need to but yeah we're just taking it chill i managed to do a little bit more work on my husband's cardigan i was sat in the chair and he was on the sofa so he couldn't see me he also wouldn't know that i was working like on it and he's not really inclined to ask because I'm constantly knitting so he's just kind of used to it 
um, and I did the number of rows the pattern said for the back and I am three quarters of an inch short on length which I was expecting because that's usual for me so that's enough for me to think mm, I'm just going to add a little bit on here so I'm going to do a few more repeats just to get a little bit closer to the length um, and ultimately because it's a drop shoulder design that will affect how many sleeve stitches I pick up this pattern, I don't know this for sure, but I think it's been graded for women's standards, though there are plenty of pictures of men wearing it on Ravelry, which is why I chose it, because I think it looks really, really good. The main difference between women and men's grading is that men tend to have broader shoulders and they tend to have um, a larger bicep circumference in relation to their chest circumference. So if I... If I lengthen the back piece, and I will also lengthen the front piece in the same way, to get that extra length, it will mean I might need to pick up more stitches for the arm later on, but that's okay, because I feel like an extra little bit of room in the upper arm isn't gonna hurt. Um, I haven't, like, I don't know my husband's upper arm circumference, and I think it would be a little bit weird to ask, but I might measure the circumference of his single malt bicep because that fits him really really well especially on the sleeves but excellent sleeve shaping for men on the single malt so I might use that as my guide and I'm really really enjoying it so far you know I was really skeptical about the all over texture but because it's worked flat and it's a four row repeat but it's pretty much a two row repeat it's just slightly shifted it is like it has already become quite um the word not mindless but it's got that enjoyableness of mindless and it's it's nice I, I'm confident that I'm going to get it done basically I am looking forward to working on my mum's my mum's my grandma's shawl tonight though for something a little bit different and just a nice garter stitch and I'm thinking if I can get my grandma's shawl done ASAP and once that's cast off, I think I'll give myself permission to finish the second sleeve on my colourwork yoke jumper. I don't know if I've shown that yet in Vlogmas. I don't think I have. Did I? I did. I showed it you yesterday, didn't I? Oh god, I don't even know. Um, and that sleeve will probably take me like two evenings or like a whole day and a whole evening. It's pretty quick because it's 55 millimeter needles and there's no shaping. It's just knitting in a circle round and round and round and round and it's really, really quick. So... I would like to get that done because I really want to wear it and it's getting cold so yeah another evening of just chilling out and knitting for me I'm really excited about tomorrow I'm really hoping Penny feels okay tomorrow which will mean we can all go and choose the Christmas tree if not it's highly likely that I'll have to stay home with P whilst Ben goes and chooses the Christmas tree I could go and choose a Christmas tree but he's way way better at it than I am I always want to choose one that's way too big um we've got very high ceilings in the living room but the higher you go the wider you get so <laughs> he's really good at choosing the christmas tree and i trust him explicitly i'd obviously love to film the christmas tree farm but if i have to stay here with my poorly girl then obviously i'm gonna do that and you'll still get to see us decorate it i'm really excited for tomorrow's decorating i'll probably be doing a bit of tidying a bit of organizing and then mr penrose is going christmas shopping tomorrow because it's his only chance to go off and do all of his little bits so i will have a clear afternoon to work on his sweater more so i hope you enjoyed day two i hope you're all feeling well and healthy i feel like everyone's you know Everyone's got something at the moment. It's that time of year and it's difficult. So I hope you're feeling well. And if you're not, I hope you've got an opportunity to rest this weekend. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining me again and good night. <laughs>